When it comes to querying SQL data, a popular way to do this is using Trino. Now, of course, for certain data sets, Trino is great, but you may also want to explore that data as a graph. In a similar way that Trino works with SQL databases, PuppyGraph also works the same way. This is going to allow us to essentially proxy to that underlying data without having to replicate it. In this specific demo, what I'm going to show you is based on a freely accessible electronic health record data set, which is shown as Mimic IV or Mimic 4 that I have loaded into some iceberg tables hosted on Tabular. The first thing that I want to show you is that I already have Trino running locally and I'm going to query that data set sitting on the cloud in Tabular. And as my first query, I'm actually going to just select all of the fields from the patients table and then order them by subject ID. But just for brevity, I'm going to limit that to the first 10. All right, and here we can see the results. So for instance, we've got the subject ID, gender, anchor age, anchor year, anchor year group, and then date of death column over here. Now let's say I also wanted to explore this data as a graph. In that case, what I can do is launch puppy graph. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to get things up and running in Docker. Although you're also able to do this through the AWS marketplace as well via AMI. But today we'll focus on getting it running locally in Docker. So I already have it running locally. However, what I did was follow these steps. First, you want to start the puppy graph container. You can conveniently run this puppy graph command here in Docker. Now, if you want to keep the image from being removed when it's stopped, you can take out this dash dash RM flag. But once you've run this and the container is up and running, you'll then have access to puppy graph. It's that easy. That will then kick you over to here, which is the main sign in page that will be running at localhost port 8081. To log in, I'll use the standard username and then the standard password, which is puppygraph123. Now, once we've logged into puppygraph, we can add a schema in two different ways. First is by using our create graph schema functionality, which is going to allow us to visually create the schema in a step-by-step -step flow. But the one we'll actually use today, just to make things a little bit faster, since I already have it mapped out, is the upload graph schema JSON. And the one I'll be using looks similar to this. I have a mimic underscore iceberg.json file that was created. I have an array here of catalogs. Of course, I'm only connecting to one catalog that is in tabular or iceberg. And I've got a couple details here, including the name, the type, and some metastore details here, which include the warehouse, the security type, session, and then also my credential to connect to it via this API. The cool part about puppy graph is that if we wanted to connect multiple data sources to our graph, we can do that as well. And that's why this is shown in the form of an array. So if we had two or three iceberg tables, or maybe one iceberg data store, and then another data store sitting in Databricks, we can take all of that data and mesh it together in a single graph. Once you've connected to your catalogs, the next step here will be defining the vertices or nodes. And just an example, we have a patient node here. You can see mapped table source, which is going to say the catalog, the schema, the table, and the meta fields that we want to use for this specific node. And then we also can describe the attributes that that node should have, which we can see gender, subject ID, anchor age, anchor year, anchor year group, and date of death or DOD, which if you recall from our Trino output, we have all of these fields here as well. Then on top of that, we also want to come down to edges, which are going to define our edges for the graph. So for instance, we have a admitted to edge here, which has a map table source very similar to our nodes. So we have the catalog, schema, table, and then meta fields. The additional meta fields here are going to be from and to compared to the one that I showed you on that example node. 
Then we also, for our edge, want to describe the from node and the to node, which will then be mapped in through these keys as well. As you can see, as we scroll down, we have more nodes as well, such as provided by, diagnosed as, and a few others. What I'll do in Puppy Graph is actually choose that file and then click Upload. And here we can now see that my schema has been uploaded to Puppy Graph. And I can see that I've got my admission, provider, diagnosis, DIM diagnosis, and then my patient node as well. And if you recall from the patient node, we have gender, subject ID, anchor age, anchor year, anchor year group, and date of death, which corresponds to the same fields that we pulled from Trino as well. Now, what if we wanted to look at the same query we ran earlier for finding patients, but explore that as a graph? Well, for that, now that I've got my schema uploaded here, I can come over to query, and in query, I can add in my gremlin query here, which has label patient. I'm then going to order by the subject ID, and I'm going to limit it to the top 10. So it's the exact same output that we have in the SQL response. I'll click the play button here to run this query. And here are our 10 patients. We can also see here in the raw result, we can see the patient, which is 032. And if I come back to Trino, you can see here that that same patient is right here. So gender, female, anchor age, 99. If I left click on this node, I can see those same details here. Now, if I wanted to explore that patient a little further, let's say I pull them out here, I might right click and then say expand with all edge labels. Now I can actually see their admissions. So this patient has been admitted to this hospital and I can see everything to do with the discharge location, admit time, and then I can also see the discharge time. I can also see insurance as well. Now, if I right click on this, I can now do expand with all edge labels again. And now I'm able to see even further from this admission. I can also see their diagnosis and I can see who the provider was. So of course the SQL data will answer some questions for us, but exploring this visually as a graph is going to allow us to very, very quickly see some other patterns within the data that would require relatively complex SQL queries. Now let's run another query in Trino where we're going to query the complete path from a specific patient to their related admissions, diagnoses, and the corresponding ICD diagnosis details. Let's do this for the patient that we were just looking at. Coming back to Trino, I'll add in my select statement here, then I'll run this, and here we can see the patient ID, the admission ID, the diagnosis ID and the ICD code full as well. Now, as you can see here, we needed to do a few joins in order to get this data. In graph, we'll come back, clear this here, and then I'm gonna show you what this same query looks like in Gremlin. And this is it right here. So patient ending in 032, out admitted to, out diagnosed as, and then finally out belongs DIM or DIM. This will actually get me the same result that I got through my SQL query in Trino. Now I'll run this and here we can see a lot more direct relationships and start to explore these further. If we get rid of some of these nodes we can see here that this is our patient then we can expand into their admissions very similar to what we did earlier when we right clicked and did expand with all edge labels, except this time we've got a more distinct query. Then we can see for those admissions what diagnosis was given. And then we can also see the DIM diagnosis as well. Of course, I could right click this and do expand with all edge labels and further explore that data as well. Now, this isn't just static data. Similar to Trino, this is actually connecting to the table in real time or the data source in real time. So that means any changes that are happening in the data upon running these queries again, you will get the latest data here. 
so it's not just a snapshot. Let's clear this and run one more query just so I can show you how easy this is to do. In this query, we're actually going to look for all patients diagnosed with aphasia and then find their other diagnosis records as well. So I can see an entire patient history. This query will look like this, where I can see the DIM diagnosis has and the long title equal to aphasia. Then I'm going to find all of their other diagnosis records as well. I'm going to run this. And now we can see a more intricate graph here. Our patient nodes, which are here, we can see that we have four patients that have been diagnosed with this specific illness. Then from there, we can see how many admissions they've had. And then we can see other diagnoses that they've had as well. For instance, for this patient, by going over top of them, I'm able to see the edges that are connecting to the other diagnoses that they've had. Another way to look at this is coming up here and going from radial layout to vertical layout. This is going to allow us to see things in a little bit of a different manner. So over here, we can see that we've got the diagnoses here. Then we can see through the diagnoses, the admissions that those diagnoses belong to, then the patients. And this is going to give us a different way to explore this data. Alternatively, we can also pick force layout, which once again gives us another view of that data. Now, another thing that we can do is also use the Cypher query language in order to query this graph too. Let's say I wanted to run a query to query the, the top 10 most common diagnoses among patients. I could do that by running the following query. From here, I can see the top 10 most diagnosed illnesses. I can see the name and I can also see the patient count. So of course in this first one unspecified essential hypertension and the patient count is 68. The second one here is for high cholesterol. The third one for acute kidney failure and unspecified high cholesterol at a patient count of 55 and so on and so forth. Now if you didn't want to run a specific query you could also come into the visualize pane click start, and this is going to allow you to explore the data without necessarily directly creating queries for it, so a more traditional type of graph analysis. Within here, you could search for a specific patient if you wanted to, and then begin exploring from there, or a specific diagnosis. If we zoom out, you'll see that data will be continually loaded, and you can explore each individual node, and also look further at the edges connecting it to other nodes. By right clicking on a node, you can bring up more details about it, including the label and the attributes. To build upon this further, we can also come over to Dashboard, which is going to allow us to essentially save queries and embed them into a dashboard. So by default here, you can see that we've got a vertex count, an edge count, a sample graph visualization, as well as vertex labels, and the count for each. So we can see here that we've got 100 patients within this data set. And down here, we can see vertex samples that are listing some of the patients, as well as some of the attributes associated with those patients. Now, let's say we wanted to add a list here, similar to the query that we did about the 10 most common di diagnoses among patients here, what we can do is click the plus button, then I'll come down to my new tile here, click edit, call this top 10 most common diagnoses, then I'll paste in my query that I've converted from the cipher query that we had before into gremlin. So you can see here has label patient, out admitted to, diagnosis says, belongs underscore DIM, has label DIM diagnoses, group count by long title, order local by values, order descending, and then limit local to the top 10, and then to list here. And the display type we'll do is as a table. Then I'll click submit. And we can see here that now we have a nice list of our top 10 most common diagnoses. Now what we could also do is add another one here by clicking plus, then clicking the edit icon again, 
and we'll just call this one patient sample visual. The query that we're going to run is just looking for 10 patients ordered by subject ID and then limit to the top 10. The same query that we ran earlier that we also ran in Trino, and we'll display this as a graph. Our layout we can just keep as radial, and then we'll do scale to fit. Then I'll click submit. I'll make this bigger and similar to what we had before. We can see our top 10 patients, the same ones that we had in our initial Trino query right here. And with that, we've shown you how you can replicate queries that you're running in Trino or in SQL using Puppy Graph to be able to look at them using graph analysis. For more information on how you can leverage Puppy Graph with your data sets, go to www.puppygraph.com.